he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are T F R. Truth Frequency Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future is ours. If you can count. Now look, we have the end before. Broadcasting straight to you from Large Spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, then you're just waiting with bated breath for the big Joe Rogan Flat Earth debunking tomorrow. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are not listening to it on a Tuesday night during that, those hours, well, then it is not live. So if you do call in, and it's a call-in show... Uh, we'll see if we can get calls tonight. Uh, then I'll go to voicemail if you're not listening to it live. But I, I will still listen to the voicemails, but just know do it, I, I, and it's a rookie mistake and you hate to see it. But lots of people still do it where they'll call. It's like, I'm calling into your show. It's like, dude, it's three days later. Anyway, quote of the day. And this is for our guest because tonight is a guest show, but I'm, we're, we may take calls again. And But this is from the peanut gallery for our guest. As you go down the rabbit hole of reading into our history – you realize that there are so many things that history books didn't teach us about ourselves. Who said that? Usher. Exciting, huh? All right. Uh, a couple of quick announcements, and then we'll bring on our guest. Uh, Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge, still in effect. If there's any academic people out there, and by that, somebody with a master's degree, and I don't know anything at this point, you want to think, you think you can stack up and go against Flat Earth? By all means, I have got. Uh, a grumpy and pretty sleepy guy in the corner at this point. Uh, his name is Jeffrey Grupp with a broken pool cue in each hand, waiting to beat people's academic heads. Because the guy's got a massive uh, mental intellect. And I'd love to actually get him in the ring with somebody, but nobody's taking the challenge. Speaking of challenges, the big money, $25,000 flat earth challenge. You guys are, again, if, you, if an academic doesn't do it, find me a professional debunker. Find me somebody that can prove the globe, and if you are into the money, if you can prove it, you can email Kathy Dunson at P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. And I think that's about it for the announcements. The show number tonight is, of course, the same as it always is, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111, but get your pudgy fingers off the dial pad right now because we have a guest and I want to talk to him about a few things first and then again maybe we'll take calls he is well his YouTube channel is D-I-T-R-H otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole are you with us man? Hey Mark how's it going? Hey it's going pretty good I, I thought it was going to start out to be a slow day in Flat Earth and then it just got nuts by by the end of it um I already have – I have back-to-back -back interviews scheduled tomorrow. Tomorrow morning starting at 9. One's in London and then one's the uh, that, that leak project with Rex. 
and then uh, I've got Patricia's show, and then 30 minutes before I started this thing, some out, some radio station in Dubai called up, and I said, "Look, I got I got a show. I got to do. And they go, yeah, "Give us give us five minutes. Give us ten minutes." I go, "Okay, okay." So they called, and and we recorded it literally 30 seconds before I connected us. Anything good? Did they ask good questions? Well, what can you do in six, seven minutes? Uh, you know, they just said, I just, ro- I just rolled with it. I just gave them my bullet, you know, the fastest bullet points I could I could give them. The curvature of the Earth, NASA sucks, Antarctic Treaty, uh, Admiral Byrd, the Truman Show. I just, just threw stuff at them as fast as I could and hoped that some of it stuck. And they were pretty excited. You know, you, you, know, you get a head of steam rolling. You, you, they appreciate the enthusiasm. Conviction wins the day. Anyway, man, it's been a while since since we've a um, little while anyway. I mean, we were on that other thing together, yeah. Uh, for for Dark Thirty, but I wanted to bring you on because you made a video recently, which again it, it goes into the whole. Uh, does it prove Does it prove flat Earth? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, you know, lots of things together really lean on flat Earth, but it was fantastic in that it compl- it tore it, it was one of the most damning things i've ever seen when it came to nasa and would you mind break it i know it's radio but and we can't share screens or anything but can you would you mind breaking it down for us kind of what what you what how you found it and where you went with it and what you were trying to get across well first there was another youtuber that found the fake mic pass or we're not sure that you know whenever the ISS guys are out there they're always flipping things in front of you you know twirling them in the air that's you know what well, that that's 52 million dollars worth of uh, floating twirls uh, yeah. per day yeah. um and somebody somebody found the the pa- it looks like they were, the guy went and moved the hat over or the microphone and the other astronaut thought he was passing it grabbed it grabbed nothing yeah. Passed it into his other hand and then put it on the shelf, um, but yeah. there was nothing in his hand and he and he was completely busted. Yeah. But then I looked I looked further into it. Um, another thing they do to prove that they're in space is always in the background in the hallway that goes sideways. Yeah. Um, are other astronauts doing things that are floating by? Yeah. And I I just looked at that. I mean, the guy's <clears throat> hanging by a harness and you could even see the harness coming off his waist as he's floating by yeah yeah but since he was just in the background i mean you know he was way back there and again that's that's straight out of movie production 101 and that is that is okay well we gotta let, let's make sure remind everyone you're in zero gravity so let's have something instead of having something floating in the foreground which they had anyway let's have a guy going across and then going back <laughs> Yeah, go back and then he one time he's going back and there's a package flying in front of him yeah yeah, because it, that's it, what you do. You'd throw it ahead of you. Yeah. It's such it's such, when I watch NASA videos, it is so upsetting to me that people can't see through this nonsense. Just go to the NASA channel, find any interview that they're doing, um, download it into a movie editor so you can flip through it fast forward and backwards and you will just find the the craziest anomalies. I, I just looked at one now and uh, I'm putting another video together. Um, it, it, it's it's. Everything behind the astronauts is green screen. Everything to the sides and in front of them is really there. But when they try to do a little trick, like put their feet on the wall, they'll push something up. And when they move their feet away, guess yep. what? It falls down. Yep. Yep. It falls oh, down. There, you know, l- let me let me backtrack real quick because the the video that that you mentioned, and now that you were met, that you were seeing it, because the guy grabbed it, and, and I know it's I'm not going to do this, guys. Justice, you've got to. In fact, what's the name of the video so people can reference it like right now as they're listening uh, to? Uh, you know what? You gotta, you caught me off guard. Let me, oh, it's uh, okay. no, it's okay. While, <laughs> let, while let he's looking it. that up real quick, exactly what it's called. What, what, what we're looking at, and the reason why it was screwed up, the reason why it's like, well, NASA wouldn't release stuff like that. They, they totally, you know, pick it, pick it up in post production. It's like, no, 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 because NASA, no, that gets, was live. That, that was, was live. live. They right. were trying to talk to – because why wouldn't you, of course? They're trying to talk to some students, and I don't know if they were junior high or high school, in Idaho. So it was a live feed. And you know full well, you know, in, in any production, Holly Productions, one of the things they tell you is if you can all avoid it, don't do live because nobody gets it right. You know, there's always production mistakes when you do it. Live is a, de- is a death sentence unless you're doing stage work. And, you know, they make big, make big deals of it during television shows. Oh, yeah, we're going to shoot Law and Order live. 
this time. And it's like, whoa, wait, now I get it. Now I understand. And, and, like, and if you watch these guys, these guys, again, are in front of a green screen. Um, they're they're using Final Cut Pro. The, the objects, the hat and the microphone, I don't believe are even in front of them. Nope. And you can see that they're looking at a monitor in front of them, yep. um, which has the objects on it. And they're they're grabbing things just like the weatherman on the on the yep. on the weather station does. He's yep. not look, you know, it's a green screen. Um, but they're doing stuff in front of them. It, it's it's easily done. And there are some YouTubers out there that are doing, you know, ISS uh, fakes, which are really good. I mean, com you know, and, compared to NASA. And now that you were saying it, I think I think it's the hat. I think you're right. Initially, I said it was the microphone, but he wouldn't put the microphone off to the side. What what happened was the guy in the blue is moving two objects simultaneously. He's moving the microphone, you know, two invi you know CGI objects. He's moving the microphone and he's moving the hat. And I don't know. I I, I partly don't even blame the guy in the green for screwing this up because he could have been looking at the monitor and it could have been the monitor that was screwing up. He could have, he could have looked and it could, maybe he thought that he was freaking moving the hat because the monitor showed him he was moving the hat. But, yeah. But why would the guy still have the hat on the other side? It's something went wrong. He yeah, something screwed went up. wrong. They, they rehearsed this a thousand times and he screwed up. And if you look at his eyes, I even yep. zoom in on it. Um, yep. You could see that he's flipping out. He's looking back and forth. He's yep. looking at the monitor. They're yep. never looking at the right place. Um, for those for those of you that want to find it, it I actually named it the exact same name um, as oh, the as, NASA. The, <laughs> as the NASA video. So when people look at it, and then I added Flat Earth, and it's um, NASA space station crew discusses life in space with Idaho students and uh, educators. But if you just go to my YouTube channel, D I T R H, it's the second video. It says NASA, um, nice. the second to last video uploaded. Nice. And and you're right. The the guy in the green, his eyes, everything you focused on was perfect. One was the harness, the guy in the back with that with the black uh, cable-y thingy that was coming off his back belt. And but for, for me, it's like having the guy in the green go through the motion. You you know full well how, how that works. It's like, OK, if you grab it's it was the most unnatural thing in the world, because if you miss the microphone or the hat, whatever you're gunning for, you don't follow through with the motion and keep going. You keep fumbling around. It's like, well, I haven't grabbed the microphone. So you, you just keep grabbing at it until you got it. But he pretended that he had it and then moved it over to the to his uh, to his far right side on, on the far side of the craft. And you're looking at it going, holy smokes, he, he completely botched it. And he had panic in his eyes. You, you can it, see it. Go, yeah, go. They, they use all different types of techniques, um, you know, to to. Uh, to make them float some, you know, old times they had actual old style, like harnesses, like from a play, you know, hanging from the ceiling yep. with wires. Um, but now they're using, um, I, and, and somebody, I actually saw a clip of it. Um, I think maybe it was from the movie gravity, how they did it. They basically have a, um, a metal brace around your waistline hooked yep. to a hydraulic arm. And in yep. that brace, you can pivot you can, and you can twist. You can do a somersault or you yep. can twist left and right. Um, and that's all like behind them. And so wh wherever they move their bodies, that that thing will move. It's, it's basically a hydraulic anti-gravity lift. I don't know what to yep. call it. Oh, no, no, yeah. Uh, yep, they use it. In fact, they use that in, in live stage productions from time to time, like Peter Pan. And yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's an old school technique. If but, you uh, if you look at the pants that they wear in space, first they have industrial belts, like they're carry like they're yep. workmen with you know fifty pound two belts on. Uh, yep. Do your pants fall down in space? <laughs> no, they do not fall down yeah. in space. It, you know, and, and, I'm Go sorry. They and they also have. Uh, you can tell that there's a major uh, harness on underneath those pants. They're they're packed. They're stuffed. Like when I go snowboarding, I don't have that much padding under my pants. Yeah, yeah. And it also the harness also explains what I've made fun of now for a, a year, which is socks. Because I was going, okay, why are you wearing khakis, a polo shirt, and socks? What what what's with the freaking socks? Why is there no shoes? And that is because if if you're spinning around, you need to slide. If your feet touch the ground, they need to slide. You can't have any friction in the bottom. You need to slide off whatever it is really nice and easily. Because if you had nice little grippy sneakers, which is what you should be wearing, you know, whatever Fred Rogers shoes, 
as soon as those sneakers hit that aluminum, that's it. You, you know, that, that motion, the, the fluidity of the motion is gone. And so socks is, is the rule, you know, it's, it's, it's great, but it, it still defies all logic because you're wearing absolutely the worst thing possible in case something went wrong in that place. I'll also notice that they're always wearing crisp new polo shirts. I want to see yep. their wardrobe up there uh, yep. with very tight fitting arms. I mean, you know, when when you're trying to not sweat through a shirt, you know, you want a loose shirt. You want a loose shirt. Yeah, but they're in space. They work out for two or three hours a day, is it, on that ridiculous machine where they could have, you know, that probably cost us a billion dollars, um, <laughs> where they could have just sent up a $500 solo flex and they would have had the best workout machine ever. No, no, no plug there, but it's way better than the machine that they have, yep. you know, and it works on resistance. It, it It's complete nonsense what's going on up there but they have these tight shirts on tucked in with these heavy industrial belts it's utter nonsense yep yeah it, it, it is it, you're right and the industrial belts is a dead giveaway you don't need belts at all but the belts they have are way way uh more um what's the word i'm looking for an industrial i suppose the word i mean it's way overkill for what you need for a belt I mean, I own belts, and that is not the belt you you want to wear in a zero G environment with khakis. You you need almost nothing if if you need anything at all. Uh, just well, that and of course, not to not to go off on a rant here, but the hair still drives me insane. It's like, look, it, this is like a swimming pool situation. I used to pick on the women because you know women used to. In fact, they still do. You have to wear in some public pools. You have to if you have long hair, you have to wear a um, a, a hair thing. Because if you if the hair breaks off and you swim through it, it's like swimming through spider webs. It's way worse. It would be way worse in zero G environment. Not to mention it would clog up the filters. It would be horrible. It would be absolutely terrible. But it's not just the women. It'd be the men too. It, it, the men. I mean, you'd have to. You seriously. You'd have to. You'd buzz their hair. You'd shave. You know, shave their arms, armpits. I mean, you'd reduce body hair to an absolute minimum all the time because it would be horrible and and what you said about the, the polo shirt is absolutely true that nobody has any stains on anything when they're on camera what nobody spills anything ever it was nobody like, gets an upset stomach from floating around you know oh, yeah. no one ever has to throw up yep. you know and uh, what what i say proves that they're not in space is the fact that they have one bathroom and it's that ridiculous ridiculous toilet yep. you know there's a one scene where that that uh big haired you know woman yep. um she's going in there showing you how to use the toilet she's sticking her hand in there she's touching it i yep. mean could you imagine that toilet in 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 on earth where oh, yeah. everything would go down oh, yeah. you know it, it's it's complete nonsense there's no there's no way it could work yeah it would it would be disgusting it would be so hor i mean the place would be uh, don't get me started, but it, the place would be so freaking, and you know, we're not the first people to suggest this. Lots of people suggested this. Like, wouldn't that place be just grunged up like nobody's business? I mean, shouldn't they be cleaning it all the time? And yet all we see is just tons and tons of nooks and crannies and laptops and cables and, and you know, stuff where dust and grime would settle all the time. The place would smell horribly, uh, it, it or smell horrible. It, it would be awful. It'd be an awful place to live. Not to mention they throw water around everywhere like they don't care. Even though a drop, a single drop of water in the wrong electrical circuit, who knows what sort of crap that would produce. It, it, it's, it's horribly upsetting yeah. that people cannot see through this. It, yeah. It's it, it's an amazing job, you know, um, the elite have done. I hate using that word, but, you know, the people that, that control this world that we live in. They've literally dumbed down the population or indoctrinated them enough where they can't that see through it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then oh, they yeah. look at they look at people like us and say, Oh, you think you're special, you have special knowledge that the rest of us don't have. I mean, it's 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 I can't Dude, even talk. Here, it's so here, here's upsetting. one do the simple math, guys. Look up stuff, and again, the what I love about the whole flat Earth movement is, is there's it's not like we've uncovered some secret treasure trove of information. This is all stuff anybody can look up anywhere because we're we're basically using uh, mainstream science their their knowledge against themselves, kind of like judo, you know, using the, a, a person's body weight against them. Like um, when they say, "Oh yeah, it costs anywhere between what eight and twenty thousand dollars per pound." 
to send anything up to the ISS, right? That's pretty pricey. And yet they seem to have no restrictions, especially in the last five years, no restrictions on anything they send up there. You'd think sending up Chris Hatfield's guitar would not be a priority. How much does a guitar weigh? Four pounds? Five pounds? Something like that? Uh, a gorilla suit. Why in the world would you send it? That's that's two pounds, three pounds minimum for the Bag crappiest. Bagpipes. Ba bagpipes. Flutes. Uh, let's see. Oh, every NFL jersey that, that's ever been made. Footballs. It's, oh, there's so much crap that is supposedly sent up there. At the very least, you should say, you know, the taxpayer money, if you even believed that the ISS was there, you, they're spending money on stuff that absolutely is irrelevant to anything. And yet, oh, by the way, did you see the one, not not to go off on a side note here, but did you see the one, I hope maybe you're making a video on it, where the, um, uh, oh, crap, what's his face? Oh, the bald guy that came down, uh, one of the twin brothers. Oh, you know his name, don't you, David? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Is it Peak? Uh, no, 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 not Tim Peak. The uh, uh, uh Gifford, who's one? the Gifford one, the one no, that's married. Yeah, yeah, the Gifford one. Anyway, he was playing with the water, with the with the with the paddles, the the uh, hydro repellent paddles. So he was bouncing the the glob of water between the two paddles, and one of the one of the community noticed that his eyes. Were not following the freaking water. They were uh, they were jumping into places that he he had it for a little bit, and then after that, his eyes were completely out of sync with the with the water droplet. With kind of went into the whole thing where you caught that clip with George Bush with the the tennis ball thing. I know. Yeah. It's it just all all of NASA, everything they do. You know, if you if you just look at it, anybody. Just go to the NASA channel and watch these videos and just don't look where they want you to look. Look to the back. Look to the oh. side. Watch watch what's going on. You know, now I notice they're trying to show that they're in space. So they're they're not even Scott, locking Scott Kelly, by the way. Scott Kelly. There you go. Scott Kelly. They're they're not even locking their feet into the floor. So they're floating, completely free floating, and they're moving their arms all around. Nope. That wouldn't happen. You would start tumbling uh away. But they're just trying to show that, you know, basically they're in this this uh, balancing device that will let them float anywhere they want. You know what? what you know that thing you go to at the amusement park where you strap your feet and hands in it and it's like a big gyroscope and you just yep. move your body. That's yep. essentially what they're on. But it's just holding on to their waist. Ah. It's one of those uh, that type of technology. Um, and it's just holding on to their waist and they could spin and rotate. Um and it's just green screened out. It's it, you know, and 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 the the big belt is part of it. You know, the like the com the computer knows to replace it with that belt. Right. But if you watch their pants, the the creases in their pants approaching the belt are very odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, what what you said earlier, and that is, look, they want to be comfortable being being up there, and yet everybody's everybody's clothing is tight. Amy, it's snug fitting. That was, nobody has a loot. But nobody forgets their belt, as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, everything's super snug, and I'm really surprised they don't have the like the um, the the cuffs of their pants like velcroed, you know, straight to their legs. You know, uh, you know, like a like a special thing like uh, parachute pants. But it's yeah, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely amazing. And I still I, I gotta give you credit for that video that you did. Oh, how long ago was that? With the George Bush thing, where you had Tim Peake on there. And they they let it slip. You know, people say, oh, no, they didn't they didn't let it slip. Oh, yeah, they did, because George Bush senior was being pushed through on a wheelchair through one of the command centers and his people would have taken priority over the video footage released because that's that's what they released. And in the background, they had the blue screen and that was the only time you saw it for that. So one. Uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll I'll go with with that. I, I actually think you're right with that analysis. But another one that I won't object to is. Um, they're rubbing, rubbing it in our faces. They, they are allowing this stuff to go out um, right. because I truly believe that they are required to tell us what they're doing. They're required to give us an opportunity to yeah. see through their deception. It's uh, the law of free will. Right. Um, they, they have to abide by it. Yeah, you know what? In some weird, demented way, I kind of go with you on that one as well because it's, it seems like it's part of the rules. That is, well, if we tell them and they still don't get it, 
then it, we're we're off the hook. If they tell us and we don't say no, we're consenting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if they if they put it out there, that's why, you know, all of the other crap that goes on in this world, they tell us beforehand. They they put it out there in movies and commercials. They even put it out there on, on their websites and reports. You know, I always wondered why they told us what's in vaccines. You know, why are they bothering to tell us, you know, right. the side effects? It's because they can tell us that people don't care because they don't read it. Right. Um, they believe the nonsense and uh you know, and then that basically gives our our free will to them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and two quick things. One was as long the the lines of of telling us things. Dennis Miller, and this was back in you know, the day when they when the commercials were starting to come out, where half the commercial was the side effects for whatever prescription drug you were going to take. And Dennis Miller made fun of it, saying, "Why in the world would you ever take a drug whose side effect reads like a book of witches spells?" And he was right. I mean, you know, some of the side effects, are the, and I'll call one out. Why the hell not? The the worst one. You guys want to look up a commercial? You can look this up on YouTube right now. Look Ambilify. up Ambilify. Abs- Ambilify. Ambilify. You're, yeah. you're absolutely right. That is the worst of the worst. And it's got the cheesiest cartoon animation, poor man's Disney happy thing. You know, the cloud of depression following you. And if you don't understand, you guys don't understand what uh, Am- Ambilify is. It is... Not a mood stabilizer. It is a mood stabilizer booster. So you're still taking the happy pills you're already taking, but you're also going to take this is going to supercharge it. And the side effects, one of the side effects is just straight up death. <laughs> it's, it's, I think that comes right after rectal bleeding and oh God. E- everything else. It's horrible. It's absolutely <laughs> horrifying. I watched that commercial the first time. I was going, wait, wait. Why? Why in the world would anybody say that? You know, would take this. Uh, two five one. Not going to take your call yet because we haven't gotten that far. In fact, oh wait, we're going to our first break right now. So hang with us, David. All right. No hate. No hype. No fear. We are the EFR. Your protection from, from, from deception. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. And we're not taking calls quite yet because we're still talking with DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Are you still there, man? I am. Cool. Hey, did you check out, by the way, you know, because I've been I've been having a hard time keeping up because there's so much Flat Earth content out there. I mean, every day is getting just nutty, the amount of content that's being put out there. Some good, some not as good. But one of the ones I liked was when they called out Mythbusters when they were doing the test on can a solid rocket motor work in a vacuum? Did you see yes, that? Oh I did Lord. see that. Wow. I mean, I thought these guys were slime when they did the whole episode where they were – and I, I know they're under orders – where it's like, oh, yeah, we went to the moon because we bounced a laser beam off of it and it came back and, and this observatory read a photon and therefore we went to the moon because we bounced a reflector off of it. But then I saw them do the vacuum bottle rocket test because <laughs> that's going to prove it anyway. But it, it completely – where they did side by side with another guy who was doing a, you know, a full-blown vacuum and the sucker wouldn't ignite, would not ignite. And of course, a solid fuel – there's nothing to burn. You need an, you need an oxygen source. And they they fudged it. I don't know, you know, was there any vacuum in that thing at all when when the MythBusters did? I doubt it. But all they did was they, you know, they threw in a, a wrench to anyone that says, "Oh no, rockets can't work in space." And MythBusters, oh, you know, they they put doubt on that because they said, "Oh yeah, look at this vacuum chamber." In fact, it wasn't even a hesitation. It wasn't like a slow burn or anything like that. It was just like it was out in the open. How'd you pull that off? How did the fuse even get lit? Ugh, it's horrible. Yeah. 
They also did the dropping of uh, feathers in a vacuum, um, uh, feathers in a hammer, I think it was. And yeah. they they show them falling down together. Um, but just before they land, edit it, edit, and then it's a new angle, just kind of like when uh, a SpaceX rocket is landing. Right. And uh, it's just complete nonsense what they yeah. did. It, yeah. It's proven yeah, fakery. I'm yeah, I mean, some of their stuff, you know, is pretty simple, and you know, I I don't have any conspiracy qualms about like when they shoot a bullet. The, the one of their favorite ones that I enjoyed, which is again how people get sucked in, was when they shot a bullet or a couple bullets straight up in the air, and measured the the depth they they punched into the ground because the myth was well, if you shoot a bullet straight up, it'll kill somebody if it comes down. And it won't. It'll it'll hurt a lot. And, and you know you probably need some stitches. But chances are you're not going to die. And uh, that that test, yeah, I completely believe that test. But then they go and do this other stuff, and then I just want to run over them in a crosswalk. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. I do. I just there's guys I want taken out, and I know it's not PC for me to say that, but there's so few people that are leading the charge here. Did you see um, recently the? Uh, Bill Nye went on uh, Colbert. I didn't. Uh, since his disgrace yep. with Bill Nye destroys the world. Yep. Yep. He went on Colbert and he answered. Uh, in fact, the peanut gallery shot this to me and he answered. He was he was basically defending himself because he was being attacked in social media about not having a master's degree in anything. And what did he say? And, well, he was saying, well, uh, what, but I took he, he said literally said and and you can look this up. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's on the Colbert thing. He said that, well, he took he took six calculus class semesters and <laughs> there was something else. He took uh, some some physics. Yeah, he took a couple seven semesters of physics. I was like, dude, that is not even not close to being enough. So six six semesters of calculus gives you what? Nothing. If you got a master's degree in mathematics, yeah, maybe you'd have something to talk about. But just because you took a couple classes, and he's he's really great about dropping the name that he that he took a, a, a class with Carl Sagan at one point. He's really big about that. But yeah, he was defending his credentials. It, it was awful. Uh, again, Bill Nye, you know, Bill Lye and uh, uh, Neil Disgrace. Um, yeah. The fact that people can't see through that. Yeah. It really it makes me depressed some days, <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, that... oh, oh, there was in fact you you really ought to tear apart this video because there's a I was thinking of doing it, but I, I there's just been too many things I've been I've been tied up. Uh, Peanut Gallery says uh, Bill Nye the actor guy. Yep, yep, I know that one. The uh, where he was he was asked uh, Colbert asked him how how he became CEO of the Planetary Society. And I don't even know why he said this on air. He was trying to be funny or whatever. And he goes, well, as you may or you may or may not know, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson is really big into wine. That was the, that was like the opener to the answer to this question. And he's going, yeah. And well, you know, he was hanging out with them and they were doing a whole bunch of stuff. He goes, he goes, I don't know if it was the Canadian gin, but sure you know before the night was over i was the ceo of the planetary society it was like the, he was just he was you know tapped on the shoulder with neil's royal scepter and and that was it that's how he got it and i just looked at this and going oh you dick <laughs> just and he, i just i don't like him so much just because i remember i'm from the northwest so i knew where he came from and watching him on television when he was doing sketch comedy Back here, you know, be way before that whole. I mean, I found out way after the fact. It's like w when he when he got on PBS and and started doing that science stuff, science guy stuff. I knew when he was doing the science guy up here, and it just drives me insane. I'm sorry, I can't. You know, er early on, you know, a few years ago, um, if that was early on when we were when we were calling out NASA, well, like way back in the yeah, day, way back, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the Globers would say, you know, why do they even need to pay attention to you? You're just a crazy, you know, YouTuber, conspiracy theorist. Well, yeah. now there's 17 million videos, oh, yeah. you know, Flat Earth and NASA uh, bashing is reached an un, un, unbelievable um, oh, yeah. uh, saturation. Yeah. And, you know, if, if NASA was real, they would take 10 minutes 
to do a live broadcast and say, all right, what do you want me to do now? And I'd say, go to the back and touch that flag, you know, go over to the Coppola and point the camera outside at the earth right now. And they yeah. can't do that. They can't yeah. do anything close, close to that. Oh, I got, I got one for you. Uh, how about spinning in two different, two different directions in the same well, shot? They, they, they can, they can do, they can spin, uh, ver you know, upright spin around clockwise or counterclockwise. And then they could also do a somersault on these, uh, Oh yeah, yeah. But can you can you go left to right? Can I can I spin? You know, like I'm doing a pirouette, and then do a somersault. I don't think yeah. you can do. I don't think. I you can think do that. so because because the one arm that's holding you, let's say it's holding you from the back. Yeah. You know, think of it like a robot oh, arm that's holding oh, you. Gotcha. That arm could move to the side, and you can pivot, and now you can you can you have you're on a literally like a gimbal, like a three axis gimbal. All right. All right, so um, it's got it's got to be an exterior shot then, because people have asked me, and I know they probably have asked you too, what would it take? Because I've I've actually gotten asked this on interviews. I'll probably ask tomorrow, which is what will it take to convince you? And I go, okay, I want a 4K camera shot, at least 20, 30 minutes in length, from a certain distance with the Earth rotating, with the weather morphing, and I want it to be analyzed by people in the in the community that specialize in Photoshop. Yeah, and that, and studio. that that that's one you know to do it um but the other thing is they're getting so good with their digital technology i'm yeah. not even sure some of uh you know that they're going to be using real astronauts they're using you know fake uh um people already the on well, television they they are but you i mean you know full well that there are when it comes to computer graphics there, there's no, there's a limit to what they can do. I mean, they can come close, but you're absolutely right. Oh, by the way, that was another thing that somebody pointed out. It, uh, that's one of the giveaways for the NASA people, and that is they have to have their hands. They can't do a tight fist. They have to have them kind of, you know, half open where the where their grip is kind of open because it's easier for the computer rendering, for for the uh, uh, ah. the C, for the CGI. It's that way you can go from hand to hand. And even then, you've seen the fingers screw up. I mean, you've seen that where the fingers don't line up. But that's why their hands are always open. They're I'll, either – their I'll, hands are I'll, either – go ahead. I'll, I'll look for that. I'll look for that. Somebody uh, – some uh, someone sent me a video of two astronauts on the space station. I think it was from uh, 2013 where they're right side by side with each other with – you know, very close to each other. And right. they're moving all over the place. But their arms never touch, right? And and they should have bumped into each other a hundred times. But when their when their arms there or an elbow would pass his arm, it it literally the, the it would just morph through it. Or, um, it you could see that it's just they're not there together. It, right. You know, but but I'm not always saying they're not there together. Sometimes they're not there together. Sometimes they're shot upside down. Right. Sometimes, right. Sometimes, I've seen that. And, yeah, yeah, and you can tell because their faces, you know how people look when they're upside down. Their their blood rushes to their head and they, you know they get they get flushed and they have that certain look. Their eyes get a little bulgy. Everybody knows when you hang upside down, it's uncomfortable. And, and th they look constipated. Yeah, and other times they're laying halfway back. You know, they're, they're at a 45 degree angle back. So you right. can see them, you know, holding their posture. Um, they they do it all, at all these different angles, so we can never get a bearing on what's going on. Because one time the wire is going to fall down, but the next time it's going to hang forward. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, I have such a. It, uh, what, I, what I do love is the amount of microscoping that we've been doing now. The community is is rabid. I mean, they they they're poor. Have you saw that thing that where they went after that 1983 footage? Which thing? The uh, where they were showing the space shuttle payload bay, and it you know you can argue that it was a reflection, the 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 guy's head that was in the it, that was off in the in the darkness. Did oh they, yeah 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 yeah. That. I mean you can you can argue that's a reflection, but uh, I don't know. I mean it, you know it, it's one of those things that it, it's like uh, you know if you're on a globe you can fight creation and and, uh, and evolution till right. the cows come home and you're, it's always going to be an argument. That one I, I truly believe that they screwed up that they are using models and it yeah. might have been a reflection near the model you know what, yeah. whatever they're using or it exactly. might have been a guy right behind it. 
Um, but it's not something that we that that you can nail the coffin close. No, with. no, you can't. But you know there were and and I would have even said that yeah, it could be a reflection. Although, look, if if it's like a truck, the back of a truck window where you're looking into the bed of the truck, you're not going to have the cam. You're going to have the camera as close to that window as possible. And if it was a reflection, that means that camera was back. It's like how much room do you have? You're going to shoot that thing from five feet back through the window? Why why isn't that camera like right at the window? But that's not the part that got me. What got me was the stuff before that. The two things that that I noticed, one was, of course, when they were launching, all the astronauts, nobody was wearing, everyone was wearing short sleeve shirts and no gloves. You know, you had bare arms from the elbow to your fingertips running the control panels. And it's like, wait, why are you running control panels anyway? You know, you're in a shuttle. You're freaking just light that candle. You're not piloting anything on the way up. And the, and that was amazing to me. You know, there's like they were showing again. This is the early days. This is 83 when nobody would have noticed that. And now now, of course, you know, everyone's wearing full gloves. So, you know, it's it's full astronaut gear when you're when you're going up there like the old days. But the other thing was the motorcycle helmets that they were wearing. I thought and you you're fully aware of the shuttle challenger photo op pick where the seven of them are sitting there in their their flight suits, but they're also they also have those cheesy white helmets sitting next to them. And I thought those helmets were just display helmets because the, you know, it's like, okay, apparently the other ones didn't work for the shot because these things are just piece of crap motorcycle helmets. They're tiny. You know, they're, they're like throwbacks from the 60s. And when you watch the 83 footage again, they're wearing those helmets. They're actually wearing those freaking helmets. I was going, why would they wait? You know, why has our spacesuit technology gotten you, you've seen the spacesuit comparisons you know gotten bigger and more awkward and more clunky when when apparently back in the 60s like with the russian and early american stuff all they had to literally wear was a motorcycle suit that's all they were wearing it was form fitted worked great hel- helmet swiveled even though it shouldn't have you know all that stuff uh, have you ever have you ever um brought a half drink bottle of water on an airplane um, harder to, to do these days because you're not allowed to bring water. Yeah, if it's open, <laughs> if it's cracked, but, they won't let but, you do it. But, but um, if you go up to altitude um, and open it, it's pressurized. You know, right. it, it, it and and if you if you drink a water on an airplane at altitude and then close it when you land, it's halfway crushed. That's yeah. just from an imperceivable yeah. change in air pressure, you know, that you're not even noticing. Maybe you notice it in your ears a little bit. Right. But if if uh, if you went outside in the zero, you know, yeah. air pressure in the in space, your suit would explode. You would yeah. it, you would blow up like the Michelin man at best. Yep. Um, but none of that happens. And then you point that out to somebody that believes in NASA and they just get that fluoridated stare. They look at you and they they don't have anything to say. Yeah. You know, and they're like, well, you know, well, what about this? They change the topic. And again, you know, the chain is broken. It's a yeah. broken chain. It doesn't work. Was it was it you or was it uh, Max Malone that found that great stop motion animation thing of it? I can't remember. If it was a Russian I, or an American? I think it was. I think it was Max Malone. Oh, it, my it, it was. It was, it was unbelievable. It was brilliant. Where, yeah, the where the you see the astronaut again. There's no 180. It's just a fixed shot where the astronaut's kind of drifting away from the capsule at orbit, and it, everyone knows if you if you're old enough to remember stop motion animation, how it works. You know, it's a frame by frame. You know, click, move, click, move, and the the way that character moved was straight. I mean, it, well, first off, he turned the freaking helmet. It's like, how in the world is that helmet spin? You know, rotating. And why have we never, ever done it again? You know, why is it, you know, looking at you? And then as soon as the helmet stops, then his arm raises up and it waves because because he's going to wave. You know, but it was so clunky. And I felt li- literally like I was watching a, a, the, the same guys that did the old Sinbad movies from the uh, the late 60s and early 70s were, were in charge of that because it was because, again, that was all you had back in the day. That's all. That's all you could use. It was ridiculous. Do you know it, what? Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and I, I keep repeating myself, it, it's once you see how fake NASA is, you, you'll you wonder how you never saw it before, and then you'll, you'll just be astonished that other people don't see it. I, I went up to, uh, you know, um, somebody that has no idea about anything, and I was like, hey, did you catch that, that uh, SpaceX launch the other day? Yeah. They didn't even know what SpaceX was, yeah. you know, it... it, it 
And I, and I pointed that it lands down, you know, like landing a pencil on its eraser. And he's like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> you know, nothing. I mean, you couldn't even go near it. Oh, yeah, it's them. cool, except it can't be done. Right. It's it's like, it, even if you were going to do it, why in the world would you? Oh, I know why. Because you don't want a camera's getting really, really close to it, which is why in the world would you land on a moving barge, a, a postage stamp of a barge on water with that isn't completely secure? Why in the world would you ever do that? But if you're going to go down that road, why don't you? Because I can go off on SpaceX and I'm going to, which is why have all the space missions, all the touchdowns now changed from water missions, you know, where you where you drop people in para parachutes into the water to ground missions where you're landing them in the dirt in Russia, you know, in, in the Soviet, I can't remember what country, but it is actually Russia, where they're, you know, they're, they're landing them because it's controlled airspace. And then... And then they wrap them in blankets while they're still in their <laughs> spacesuits that can handle a 400 degree swing in temperature. Yeah. Yeah. And they put them in lawn chairs in the field and they take a photo op for 30 minutes. It's like, what are you guys doing? Why, why not land them? I mean, if you can touch them down there, why not touch them down? I don't know, right next to a military base. And why is there a photo op at all? Because they want, they want the press. Speaking of which though, cause I want your opinion on this. What's, when you first heard about the, you know, forget about the Google X challenge, which is, well, maybe we'll talk about that too. But when you first heard about the, the SpaceX moon tourist thing, what was your initial reaction? The That's going to happen. The, the, you know, the SpaceX is going to send two tourists around the moon mm -hmm. and back next year. Yeah. So we've, uh, we've lost the technology to go to the moon, to, to land on the moon. That's what they said now. Yeah. Um, but we're going to Mars. Yeah. But they're going to, it's just, I laughed. I mean, I, I <laughs> what, what else are you going to do? You know, I mean, they're, go ahead. They're, they're going to take somebody, um, somebody, some Freemason, and he's going to go, yeah, I went, you know, here, and I took pictures, and they're going to show us a bunch of nonsense. Um, but, but that's it. Unless you go, you can't prove it. The only way I can see them, because you remember, I, I've said this on several different things. If if somebody, if a government agent came to me, if a group came to me and said, Mark, you're the best Hollywood director we know. Here's an unlimited amount of money. You have unlimited amount of tech at your disposal. Can you fake a Mars mission for us? And I'd look at him and I'd say, you are out of your freaking mind. You're going to try to do this live. You're going to, uh, you're going to try actually do, you know, almost real time footage. You're never, ever going to, you're never, ever going to do it. Oh yeah, the peanut gallery wants me to bring up that Air Force plane from yesterday, and I will. Uh, just, I, I will right after this. But when it comes to the SpaceX, and you guys haven't heard, SpaceX is claims that they are going to send two tourists. We don't even know who these guys are. People are. I imagine there would probably be a man and a woman, maybe not, uh, around the moon. Not going to touch down on the moon, but around the moon and back safely by next year. Even though NASA says they, they, it, the resources cannot be done, they're breaking every rule that NASA has tried to hold to for the last 60 years. NASA says it costs too much money. It can't be done because of the Van Allen belts. It can't be done because of this. And SpaceX says, oh, yeah, we're just, we're just going to do it. And it's like, with what booster? The Falcon Heavy rocket? What, you, that's not even tested. What capsule? What capsule is going to hold the five people you're going to need to pull this off? Not to mention... Here's the big one that they're going to screw up on, which is how in the world are you not going to film this? Because 4K cameras are super cheap. You get one in a box of cereal nowadays. So with multiple 4K cameras with unlimited recording ability, you know, it's just a hard drive. You're just going to record this thing forever. The camera is never going to stop. How are you going to shut all that stuff down? And still pull this off because you cannot – all the stuff – remember I said that there's no no footage of any craft leaving or entering Earth's orbit and all this other stuff. How are you going to not show it? And the only way I can think of them – one of two ways. Either you're going to uh, have a horrible catastrophe on the pad and it's not going to go anywhere or, or you're know, going to kick it down the road. Or they're going to turn it into a remake of Apollo 13 where they're going to head to the moon. They're going to have a systems failure. And all the cameras are going to go down simultaneously, except for the interior. They'll, Mark, they'll keep... go ahead. I'm sorry. What what they're doing is the same thing they do with all these hoaxes and false flags. Is as people dig into them, they just put another one out there, and everybody drops all the work they've done, and they focus on the new thing. Let's uh, just go back to the magical building of the uh, space station. You right. have to think about this. These astronauts up there, they're essentially the construction workers that are that are putting things together. There would have to be a 
a hundred different cameras videoing this so the people at Mission Control can can, can um, you know organize the whole thing and and say all right move left go right grab this you know all of that had to be videoed down to Mission Control so they can build it right. there's as you know there's not a single video of the construction of the International Space Station. Yeah. That there proves it's complete and utter fraud and there is nothing up there man-made. Agreed, agreed. The ISS, which which is celebrating its 20th anniversary uh, next year, I think, 1998 until, yeah, 2018, is, there is no, you'd think they'd have tons of time-lapse footage things of the, the, the construction of the ISS from all points of view and there's nothing. Nothing even. All you'll see is computer animations. This is how it was built, and they throw, you know, slap a whole bunch of CGI stuff together from an outside perspective. But you never see any footage of the construction of this damn thing. It's, it would have to have so many cameras on it from all different angles to be able to put it together in such a crazy light, dark, hot, cold, you know, oh, yeah. environment moving. You know, you know, you can't feel the movement because there's no, there's nothing up there. It, it's just, it's the nonsense is beyond. Uh, my ability oh, yeah. to comprehend. Yep, I absolutely agree. It's an extension of, I mean, you know, the old tricks are the best tricks, and they learned that they could get away with it with the moon cars. The the moon cars was the early version of that, which is we put cars in them, even though you didn't need them. You know, we put cars in, and golf clubs. We put cars in the moon, but we're not going to show you exactly how that ha went down. We're not going to, you know, we're, we're, we'll show you kind of some fuzzy pictures of how it may have been kind of lowered down, but who, who turned the wrenches? Who folded this thing out? I mean, you got to remember, the astronauts had to, had to build these cars and and then drive them around, even though when you double the speed of them, or was it two and a half times speed, it looks like just a freaking dune buggy going through the sand. Uh, why? Any, 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 pick anything that they do in space, anything, you know, from the bathrooms to the cars right. to, you know, the shuttles that come up, anything, and just look at it with 10 minutes of critical thinking, and you'll see that it's it's complete and total nonsense. I absolutely agree. It's horrifying. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, is we will, if, if DITRH doesn't mind, we're going to, we'll take some calls. If we can pull it off. I, I have not done this with a guest, and if it kills the thing, well, it's fine, then I'll... What, what, what I would like is anybody that's new to this, if there's anyone new out there that has, hey, I don't think the earth can be flat because of this reason, you know, that's great. That's what I want to hear. And okay. maybe maybe we can share something that uh, will help you uh, real think in a new way that, that, that you didn't before. Yeah, yeah. If you guys don't think, if somebody out there and I know, in fact, let's see, let's try this because we're coming up on break. Well, oh, he and a person hung up. <laughs> Uh, there was a bunch of people that were calling during the first thing and there you are. And there is, okay. So the phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897. And let's try two. Oh, I can't. No, nope. says I can't, I can't add it to the call. I'm sorry, man. I can't. So you can't I, take calls. No, no, I can't. And, and the reason is, is because of Microsoft. They they've got it. Something goes on, you know, because Microsoft bought the uh, uh, this, you know, bought Skype. And so what they did is they they screwed something up to where if I talk to you, it jams up and then I can't uh, I can't take phone calls. I can't add anybody. The, the add to group function is gone. The only way I can do it is if I uh, if I rebooted Skype entirely. You do that during the commercial. Uh, I can try. I can I can try to maybe I'll maybe I'll grab a call and maybe I can grab you in we can try it. You wanna do that? Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do, guys, is I will reboot during the commercial, not the whole machine, just this. And then I will take a caller first, and then I will try to add D I T R H. Because I know if I add D I T R H it's gonna it's gonna gunk it up, but I've never tried the other way to All right, go for it. I'll be listening. Okay. Talk to you guys in a bit.
This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World Part Three of Four, and I know I know all the phone calls. Hey, I've already got somebody on the line from seven five seven area code. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Stay there. What we're gonna do? And eight six three, stop calling. I know there's a delay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to add in DITRH, and we're gonna say add to group call. And if this dies, well, then I'll I'll just bring the station back and. Maybe I'll just bring back in DITRH because, but we'll give us a shot, okay? So here we go. Nobody panic. Right. Here we go. Okay. Add to group. Right. DITRH. Okay. And I think I may have him. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Here I am. Hey! hey do we, and we have all three hey. of you. Now, of course, you know, Murphy's Law says as soon as this caller hangs up, the whole thing's going to freaking die. All back. right. But we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. So where are you calling yeah. from, man? I am calling from, uh, actually, I'm calling from Michigan right now, but hail to Dave. And- okay, so the studio's back up. I'm back up, and now i got to bring back in DITRH. All right. DITRH, are you there? Studio back. DITRH. Here I am. All right. Okay, so what's going to happen is because this is just a freaking, uh, we, can't, we can't pull together. So what we're going to do is you and I are going to talk for the rest of this this segment, and then I'll take callers on my own for the, the last one. I'll reboot it one more time. So Okay. Hey, man. But it gives you a chance to plug, plenty of time to plug whatever we need to and whatever else we want to go over. So what have you been doing like the last um, couple of weeks? What's been kind of your your focus recently, the whole flat earth movement? By the way, anyone that's calling in, I'm not going to take calls to the last segment, and then it's going to be real fun because everybody's going to call at the same time. Anyway, sorry. What do you you know, anytime I'm just looking into flat earth, you know, when I have free time, um, seeing what's going on that lately, you know, NASA, SpaceX, all of this, uh, nonsense in space is, uh, fascinating to me. And, uh, you know, I, I try not to watch a NASA video because when I do, I see something and I feel like I need to make a video. So right. did, you, did you, did you see the air force pl- drone story from uh, yesterday? No, to tell. Oh my God, it was sent to me by I don't know half a dozen people, and they said, "Oh yeah, by the way, did you check out the the Air Force drone? What Air Force drone? They land a drone that's sort of shaped like a tiny version of a space shuttle, unmanned, right? And at some Air Force base, and they they spin it as a story, like the Air Force has just landed a super secret drone, you know, unmanned space vehicle that landed after 718 days. Is that and, the XR-38 or whatever it's oh, called? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they've got guys in white hazmat suits walking around it with Geiger counters. And it's like, okay, if it's super secret, one, you're never going to run a mainstream story on it. <laughs> uh, two, if it's radioactive, then why do, you know are half the people not even wearing hazmat suits? Uh, I used to believe in the, in that I the, the, that that it was flying around space for a year or two, and then it oh, comes yeah. back. And I used to believe it, hook, line, and sinker. And yeah. it, the only reason they people believe in NASA is because they don't check. They yeah, don't they, check. They, they took it for granted, and that is because NASA is officially tied to science. 
Yeah, so I, that's, NASA. Let's face it, NASA is the 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 most recognizable uh, mascot of science, and th- they wear white uniforms. They don't carry guns. They smile for the camera, and they do seemingly fun, benign things. And that everyone took it as face value, and that is, oh, well, these guys are completely legit. It's like they're they're DOD. They, in fact, they're uniquely military. They are the you know based on on ex Nazi rocket technology, they are nothing but military all the way around. The problem and, is the problem is that people are nice. People are honest, you know, generally speaking, and they can't imagine that you know people that we trust um, could deceive us on such a huge scale. It, it's mind boggling to me every day when I look at this going. How can this deception be so big? But, you know, um, it's like a detective walks into a room and there's dead bodies, there's blood all over the place. He doesn't go, I don't believe there was a murder because there's no motive. You yeah. know, there's a murder. You got to look yeah. at the evidence. Right. Abs- absolutely right. And it's it the people got to realize that the biggest tricks are going to be the one that everybody falls for. If the trick is really good and it's repeated again and again and again. People are going to buy it. The, it was so easy. And the, and the argument I've been throwing at people lately is just to kind of get their head moving quicker, which is because eventually everyone leans into that. In fact, I'm thinking of doing a clue eventually on this. Where people always lean on a space program. They say, well, you know, NASA, there's they're streaming ISS footage. I go, fine. Get rid of that for a second. What happened before 1972? How did you know before 1972? It's like, what well, did 72 have to go? Because that was the first picture of the Earth from space. I thought, well, NASA was founded in like 1958. Fine, fine. Go back to 58. I don't care because for 450 years, we, everybody, absolutely, which is why I use the the George Orwell quote, everybody knew it was a globe. How did you know before 1958? And eventually you're going to have to come to the same conclusion. You don't want to say the words, but we all say it. And that is because science told us. They didn't show us. They told us. Everything we know about planets is from NASA and Disney. There's no other source, you know, yeah. and all the other space agencies, which are all, you know, proven to be nonsense. Right. Um, you know, the seven new possible Earth-like planets that they discovered? Right. Um, and we saw pictures of these planets, you know, or images. They never, NASA never says photo or uh, or uh, image. What are the two words they use? don't use? Photo or image. They use uh, I know they don't use the word photo, but whatever. Oh, you mean like the versus composites and yeah, yeah they they yeah. say uh, they say they they don't use. The oh word no, you're right. They photo. don't use the word photo. They use right, right. they use they use image or yeah, series they use, they series use, of images or right. coupled together. They, they don't use photo or picture. I think that they don't know they, they don't. That's the other word they don't use. I think, but but um. So we have all of those images of these seven planets. And there's color, and this one has water, this one doesn't. But um, I saw somebody made a video that showed the, the data. Uh, can yeah. you find that video? Because I'm looking for it. Oh, and literally, I... it's just a black. It's a, it's a uh, black screen with a white graph or white screen with a black graph, whatever, of just little lines. Like you know, it looks like right. little little lines. And then there's a little dip. You know, it's like um, you know, a, a equalizer where it's showing you all the bars of the of the music, and there's some little dips, and by those dips that in light intensity, they determined all of these things. Right. I mean, it's complete and total imagination. Oh yeah, yeah. And they talked to those two artists that were sitting there, those two graphic artists, and they were saying that, well, yeah, we have to take take interpretive license. What because video is that from? Do you know? I, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm scroll, scrolling down because I, I I watched it. I absolutely yeah. know what you're talking about because when they got to the artists and the artists are basically fessing up, right? They're saying, yeah, every deep space photo image you've ever seen from NASA is an artist's interpretation. We've just made it look w- like a photograph. You know, that's that's all that's all we've done, you know, especially with the planets. You know, they it, because they don't. You're right. The, I saw that same thing where it looks like a sound bar where the, uh, uh, the they're looking at nothing. It's just data. And it's just data that NASA fed you. So it's the, the, the data means nothing. They basically have to, it's like, okay, what are you trying, what, what NASA, what do you think is happening here? And then they give them the description and they, and then they draw it from there. You, that's no different than any movie production house where you go and it's like, I, I need a set built. Honestly, it's the same thing that, that Matt Bullen would have been hired for. 
It was like, okay, what do we need? Well, we need kind of a bluish green planet with lots of clouds and a, and a binary star system. Draw that up. So yeah. are, you, are you still looking for it? No, yeah, I'm, I'm looking, but, but I, it's, I, I but don't, yeah, I don't know. I, you're, yeah, people, again, we take everything we have for the longest time at face value. Every picture, no, it's not to say that adults are like children, but in some regards we are. Until we're lied to, we don't believe in lies. The when we're children, the, which is why I used in the clues, which is why I used the, the movie, the oh, wait, I think Peanut Gallery found it. He's really good who, at that. Who is this peanut gallery? Gallery, and where are you seeing his messages? He's, he's not on, in the chat. He's in, no, he's in Skype. Okay, and he's wow. uh, he messages me. He's his identity is secret, and it's called "How to Explore Exoplanets." Uh, in fact, let me click on it real fast, and hopefully, I don't lose it. "How to Explore Exoplanets." It was done. Well, hopefully, this is it. We'll see. This can't be it. This is it, or is this a, like a different one, an original? But it, this one was done the end of 2016, and it's three minutes long. Really, is this it? That's one. Of, it's it's a version of it. Oh, huh. pretty cool. All right. Anyway, the where was I going with this? I don't know. I don't remember either. Uh oh yeah. Well, it was the same thing where where I was where I was trying to say in one of the clues. Not not just the Truman Show. Forget about the Truman Show. If you don't care about the dome, who cares? It was the movie The Village by M. Night Shyamalan, where they took kids, you know, the, the parents wanted to get away from the crime-ridden streets, these rich parents. And so they bought a wildlife preserve, they built a town from the 1800s, they brought, you know, they raised kids from infancy, infancy there, and they told the kids they were living in Pennsylvania in the 1800s. And you could take a line right out of the Truman Show for that, and that is, we believe the world that is presented to us. If yep. your if your parents, I mean, honestly, like the Amish, for example, an Amish family, you know, for you know, if they're out far enough in the weeds, they could tell their kids anything they want about the world, and and the kids are going to believe it. Which is why I, I kind of postulated later. I said, you know, what's an interesting sequel to The Village by M Night Shyamalan would be when the parents got old and passed away, then you've got nobody in that town that knows th what year it is. That, that it's actually 150 years later and that there, there is modern technology and that there are no monsters living in the woods. People believe what you tell them. They, people don't, they will, they will naturally not think that people lie. I know there's people that are more suspect than others. I mean, I myself didn't literally did not believe that authority figures would lie until I got to college. And then as I got like, ah, crap, then I was in trouble. And then but, you realize how much they lie. Oh, and then oh. when you realize that, you find out that you only know a tenth of oh, what yeah. they're lying about. Oh, yeah. Well, my, my first, literally, my, you talk about a jarring awakening, because the internet was you know, nowhere to be found, was, uh, was going to see JFK in the theater. That was, my, that was my first exposure to it. And I was just floored. I was just floored. I was like, going, holy smokes. What, what is going on? That was my, you know, and then, then I had to revisit everything. And then I was suspicious of more and more as the years went by to where now, you know, you can't believe, and I know it sounds, you know, too conspiracy cliche, but look, look, when you're watching the mainstream news, don't take anything at face value. Don't believe, I don't care what the story is. It, it's, it, it's. I mean, in fact, there was a story that came out just today, a little one, but it reinforced space, which was Russians now are saying that there, like a Russian study has been done over years, which says that actually salt doesn't make you thirsty. And I'm going, why would you run that story? It's because they tested it by simulating astronaut conditions here on Earth. That's how they ran the studies. So the study has nothing to do with with if salt makes you thirsty of course it makes you thirsty everybody knows that drink enough bloody marys and you'll wake up in the middle of the night and drink a gallon of water the uh it's about the the globe reinforcement that's all it is you know every story you think about that's out in space has it's all about the globe the subtext is always there face on mars something on saturn oh look new picture of pluto doesn't matter if you believe the story even read it as you know as long as you hear the title that's all that's important which is oh yeah you're on a globe a little reminder, you're on a globe. 
Stupid. There's a there's a video called uh, it's called um, rare 1950s Walt Disney predictive programming flat yep. Earth and Freemasonry. Did you see that? Yeah, you and I watched the same stuff. That is really weird. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> watched that. And that's it's, a that's a cool video because it sounded like it was narrated by Orson Welles or, or that Orson Welles wannabe that works for Disney. Because I did think I remember seeing that as a kid. Um, I think I did. Uh, so. But but if you if you think about it, you know, anywhere from three year olds to fifteen year olds can be sitting down. This is this is them being shown, you know, something that they never really were. You know, no one's gonna go to a kid and go, "Space doesn't exist. Aliens aren't real." You know, plan, you know, the Earth is like you're not gonna hear any of that. But then you sit down and watch this trusted old man, you know, Walt Disney, introduce this show, and then this hypnotic voice in this reassuring, you know, showing yep. you this is the way it is. That is mind control at its oh, finest, yeah. and that is implanted in these, uh, you know, new young brains that don't have any discernment, and it becomes their core belief. Right, right. The well, I had a moment of hope, and I, we've got a little little time left before the next break. Got like six minutes, but I wanted to relate this. You probably may or may not have seen this, but it was uh, it was a little clip from Neil's Neil Tyson's uh, Cosmos show. Where he had a couple younger, you know, girls that were astrophysicists or rocket scientist people, and they were talking about blah blah blah, space this and space that, and he mentions the moon missions, and the one girl looks at her, and I use this as one of the clips, you know, a long time ago for a Strange World intro, and she goes, "Yeah, that was a thing, you know, that you know, like, like, uh, like that was kind of a big deal, you know, it, but, and." He was going, what are you talking about? What it was a thing, it was a huge deal. And he, she goes, Yeah, but we haven't done it since. And and she was kind of making the point that's like, look, two generations have gone since then, you know, have have gone nowhere. Two generations of people, you know, the the to the point where now there's kids that have no freaking idea about about the movie. I mean, it is literally ancient history to them. And that she goes, we should, she, you know, they cut off pretty quick, but it was, they, she's going, why we, you know, show me it, do it again. I want to see it again. And that's, that's true. If reinforcement really, really helps. And they never did it. They never bothered to do it. They were scared to death of getting found out, which again, I, I want to throw this at you. Cause I don't know if you and I ever talked about it was cause you, you know, full well, you know, the Americans said they went, but then everybody else quit. Nobody else, you know, the Russians didn't land a man on their own, China, Japan, European. Nobody went except for the Americans. And I was going, geez, why wouldn't they? You know, the, the space race, the space race had to end when the Americans got there because if they didn't, you've got a continuity problem. Meaning if the Russians show up, you know, if the Russians land on the moon and their footage doesn't, their environment doesn't match yours absolutely to a T. I mean, down to the whatever ash you're using on the ground to whatever reflection of the lights, if their lighting is wrong, they it would be torn apart in two seconds. You, Didn't that just happen with the Japanese on on the moon? Uh, not the Japanese, but the Chinese. The, the Chinese. The Sorry. Chinese. Yeah, the Chinese. Yeah, the, the the missing thing that nobody knows about. The Chinese supposedly have had a, a a working rover on there for three and a half years, and yet they are not ever ever going to go into the sea of tranquility and go by the American flag because. We've already got all the images from that. And if those that, images that would be that, trespassing. Yeah, it would be. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but come on. Think of how what a great thing for China would be. If it was real. You go there, you knock over the American flag accidentally, you know, the news media just freaking loses it. It's like, oh, an international incident is China declaring a new, you know, space race war. You know, whatever it is. It's but anyway, they can't do it. Nobody can. You can't, you have to. I will say this, they did stop when they were supposed to, had they gone any further, had the Russians gone there and then we turned this into, we have four people on the moon, we have five, that somebody would have found out that it wouldn't have lasted as long as it did now because then you would have had multiple angles and you can't do it. So anyway, we got um, four minutes and then we're going to say goodbye to DITRH and then we're going to try to, re I'm going to reboot, I'm going to take phone calls, rapid fire, three minutes, no longer for anyone's calling in. You got to get your points out quick. Uh, you want to, no, don't, geez, I said that in people calling like right now, the, um, do you want to, what do you want to plug? What's, what's, uh, where do you want people to go? Um, uh, you know what, just 
research flat earth, you know, you can go, go to my, you know, when you're trying to, most people here listening, I'm assuming already know the earth is flat. So when you're talking to other people about it, don't try to jam information down their throat, ask yeah. questions, you know, pose them questions. Did you ever think about this? Um, don't give them a, a four hour Morgyle presentation because <laughs> th even though they're epic, they're not going to watch it because uh, they don't right. believe it. You know, you're not going to go watch something long. So that's what my, my videos are one, two, three, four minutes long each. Yeah. Um, and they'll, if you watch two or three of my videos, then you might watch a 30 minute video. Then you might watch an hour video and then you're a flat earther. So you just start people off slowly. Um, don't get frustrated because just remember you were there once also. Yep. Um, you know, I ban people from uh, social media, from my podcast um, for telling me to look into Flat Earth because it was nonsense and I wouldn't even watch a two minute video. Yep. Um, so, you know, when when somebody, uh, you know, don't say, hey, the Earth is flat. Just say, you ever wonder how you can see a you know, a, a beach a hundred miles away when there should be, you know, 6,000 feet of curvature, right. you know, um, and, and they'll, they'll slow down. They'll come up. Well, they'll come up with something and, uh, you just keep asking questions because it's just like a kid. We're all kids. You can't give a kid advice unless they ask for advice. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, exactly what I was going to say, you know, put the nugget in their head, let them let them deal with it. You cannot force somebody again. Leave the horse to water. You you cannot force somebody down this path. You've got to you, let them find it. You can lead a globalist to knowledge, but you can't make them think. There you go. <laughs> it's true. I mean, and it works. I mean, look at the uh, not to end on a weird note, but that Bill Burr thing from yesterday, the Bill Burr comedian thing. He was, was he was he was shredding us a couple weeks ago, and now this morning. He, you know, he was treating us pretty gingerly because he, because I will say this, the flat earth community, once you get into flat earth, you're so pumped up. You're so enthusiastic that it's, when you see attacks, you go after people. And, uh, one of the interviews I'm doing tomorrow, he's, I think he's having me on because he got freaking wailed on by a lot of flat earthers. Like, you know, I didn't authorize it. Nobody authorized it. It's just a natural thing. So. Anyway, any uh, any parting shots? Any parting well, words? The last, I'll, I'll plug my favorite video for new people. You know, if somebody says, "Hey, send me a video," I recommend uh, a stranger's glot, a stranger's guide to flat Earth. Twenty one <clears throat> questions by ODD Reality. Nice. It, but you have to look it up as a stranger's guide to flat Earth. 21 questions because it's such a good video. There are now hundreds of debunking videos that try to hijack <laughs> your search for, if you search flat earth, 21 questions, you're going to hit a ton of, uh, of nonsense debunking videos. And I don't mind you can watch those debunking videos, but you should watch the real video first and yeah. think for yourself. Yeah. And again, I don't, I don't condemn the people that debunk is because everyone starts out as, as debunking it. So, more the merrier. You guys want to try to debunk this thing? Great. Eventually, you're going to have to give up. But hey, take your shot. You're just going to expose more people, and the bigger, but more subscribers, the better. I'll just keep exposing them. Very yeah. good, Mark. Thanks All for right. having me. Hey, it was a thrill, man. So uh, I will talk to you soon. And uh, anyone out there, we're we're going to go the last segment. We're just going to do phone calls, and so you can call during the break. It's going to take me about 90 seconds to restart this thing. And when you call in, please, we're going to be brief. We're going to go rapid fire. Just get your points across and, you know, don't go into a huge thing because, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of people are backed up already. And that's that's it. All right. Enjoy. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. All right. See you, man. Bye bye. bye. TFR. The Truth Frequency Radio.
Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. We are taking calls. We got 757. Oh, yes. By the way, before we talk to 757, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. All right, 757, go. What do you got? Into the night. Yeah, I can oh, see no, no, you. <laughs> I showing you up. Hey, I'm, I'm Mr. Killwill, okay? I'm Mr. Killwill. Uh, you got uh, some uh, emails from me. Mm -hmm. um, for, first name, Gbri. So I put myself out there, okay? I'm a flat okay. earther, and uh, I'm the infamous, and I, and I like to uh, do comment, make uh, comments out there across the uh, board nice. and i want to say this i want to say this that um i did receive uh a message back from nasa goddard okay, okay. NASA, and and uh that was important because they don't they don't respond to everybody okay true and and when they responded to me, that was because of the fact that I, I had posted on their on their on their little Kepler to what Pluto Uranus, the fact that how does this make sense? Right. But how I said it was, it was very intelligent. Okay, I, I listed how it is not possible. Okay. Um, you have how, how, you know, the physics of, of thrusters, right. what have you. you got to list, list the stuff intelligently, and then they will try to come back at you and debunk you. Okay. Right. That's that point. And then when they reply, then shoot, then, then hit them hard and then yep. hit them hard. Hey, we, I'm a taxpayer. You owe me okay now i want or i request you owe me because you know you're a taxpayer mm -hmm. second of all second of all i just want to say that um we got to step up uh, i'm talking to all the uh flat earthers who kind of browse and listen at your listen to your program for once in a while what have you and go on mm -hmm. hey flat earthers you need to start step up when I when I written to, when I written to Mark, I had I said brace yourself for the onslaught, and now we're getting the onslaught because, hey, Sunday, last Sunday on in this in this NBC, you had Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, to, you know, saying, hey, I written a book, and and, uh, yeah. and, and, and you're right, you're right, he he looks. He looks like uh, Shinbad and sound like uh, Cosby. Cosby. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he, I read the book and astro astrophysics uh, basics and. <laughs> yeah. Listen, folks. He we pushed him. We forced him to write a book, or he would have sat sat on his laurels and drank whatever California wine. Right. We are making him work. We got to make Brian Cox work. We got to make Cuckoo, Makai, Makai Cuckoo, wherever that, wherever that guy name is. We got to make these guys work. Yeah. Okay, so so people need to step up. All right, get the, get the activism going. Get brave. Yep. Get brave. You got a Chinese guy. Thanks to Mark, he put it out on his uh on his on his uh on his, on his vids. Yep. About um, world, world, Russians, Chinese, yep. everybody jumping on. So, you know, Russians and Japanese and Chinese, they are risking their lives with, uh, with the. Uh, um, Agreed. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. They don't have freedom. They don't have freedom of press. They don't have freedom of speech. They can be killed at any moment for speaking about flat Earth. Yeah. So we got to lead the way. Agreed. And if you if you don't if you, if you don't you know like uh, hey snap to and get at it yep. now. Um, and then the last thing last thing before you click me off is that uh, I just want to say uh, thank you, thank you for showing um, the, the the 
folks around the world. I hope that gets people in America who who are inquisitive and questioning. And that's all that's all flatters that's all flatters is asking yeah. is to be inquisitive and question and doesn't make common sense. Yep. Gravity is it, it, it how can I mean gravity? I, I know, man. I know. So so I really appreciate you taking my call and oh, uh happy to do it. And 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 thank you and thank you, Mark, and thank you, Dave, for uh, and uh, this was <laughs> real brief, you know. But I, I want to thank you too, and I hope I got my points across. Oh, you did. Uh, you did very precise. well. Nice work. All right. Excellent work. All right. All right. Hey, thank you have a good one. Okay. All right. You too, man. Okay. Bye bye. Eight four five. Are you there? Eight four five. Yes. Yes, hey. I'm here. How are you? What's going on, man? Hey, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How uh, you yeah, doing? I got to make this quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, got, I got a quote for you. Yeah. We have an infinite amount to learn from both nature and from each other. Nice. That's good. You know who, who that is? Uh, Carl Sagan? <laughs> John Glenn. Uh, I know. I know. I saw that. I was like, oh, I got it. Oh, John that Glenn. That's awesome. Nice one. <laughs> Cool. Oh man! All right, just I, I'm I'm gonna go. Actually, I, I just wanted to let you know I'm a diehard. I'm at the ER with my wife. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so sorry, I ran, man. dude. You, I, I, you, I I completely I forgot where you were. Hope I hope she does okay. Yeah, she's doing all right. Her temperature's back down. It was 105. I threw her in the shower, got her down, and brought her to urgent dude, care, why? and they sent dude, us to the why, ER. Why are you talking to me? She's gonna hate me if you. Do ah, this. nah, nah. She knows. She knew exactly what I was doing. I'm all like, right, all right. We've been sitting here for hours. All I'm, right, I'm glad she's okay. All right, bye. I, and I'm flattered she called from from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, bye bye. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Four four three area code. What is going on? Hey, man. How hey. you doing? I'm doing well. All right. Hey, I just wanted to ask you a question on one thing. Yeah. Um, in the earth. Do you, what's your opinions on that? Because uh, I've seen I've, the video, I'm sure you've seen the video of uh, the Russian airplane where they show supposed Antarctic footage. I think it had it in I, one of Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe, I, you know, the, if it wasn't for inner earth, it wasn't for a hollow earth theory. And by the way, 254 area code, I, I, I swear I will pick you up before the show ends. I know that you've called probably about 25 times tonight. The, um, uh, I that's what I got into two five four seriously time delay I I know stop calling the um that's how I got into flat Earth because I was into hollow Earth theory and I still believe in it now meaning I think that there are subterranean systems if our deepest drills can only go down eight miles and it doesn't take anything for a civilization to live at even just a one mile gap I mean you could have a right. cave system that was you know even just ten miles high. And who's to say well, we're and, not in a, in a cave system? Yeah, and with the flat Earth theory, I mean, really, that inner Earth theory could go on for, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, however however long you uh, think it's possible. I absolutely <laughs> so, believe in believe in it. I think it dovetails but, uh, fine into it. So, do you know that video that I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah, there's a okay. slew of them out there, and and uh, uh, I was all, one more thing, and I'll yeah. let everybody else get on. Yeah. Um, have you listened to the whole, uh, I think it was like the Libyan desert class as if and that fits into the dome theory. Uh, basically it's this. Oh, uh, how big chunks material. of stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's like a weird, strange material that no one can really explain. Yeah. And you know, if you're going to try and hit the dome what better place to do it in the middle of the desert <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right i've looked i have looked into that uh in fact the other thing i looked into was a look if you want to have some fun with that sort of stuff falling from the sky look into something called the annotated jessup report which is okay. uh uh called uh a case for the ufo by um by jessup and it's the annotated Varro edition, V-A-R-O. If you can find it online, and they're easy to find, don't look for the hard copy. And you'll see he starts off with a whole bunch of objects, uh, sheets of ice that were, you know, big sheets of ice that were way bigger than, than ever could have been that were falling in weird places. Things that were falling from the sky that should not be there. Right. Not stuff. Now, was, where do you, go ahead. Where do you stand on, like, uh, you know, 
because I, I mean I've witnessed you know meteor showers. Yeah. What's your stance on that? I think meteors are real, but I don't think that there's any objects up there for them to yeah. hit. I think meteors are no right. different than us throwing a, a rock into an aquarium. You know, just yeah. interject a piece of metal at a high speed, uh, shallow angle, let the friction of the atmosphere burn it up. Try not to aim at any major cities, and that's all you need. But in yeah. doing so, yeah. why haven't any satellites gotten smacked by anything? Remember, it doesn't yeah. take a big one. Yep. It's a, a meteor the size of a nickel can take out any satellite, including the space station, if you believe in these things. So why haven't yeah, they? Yeah, and they're, and they're supposedly made out of, you know, things you can buy at a yep. hardware. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, but uh, thanks again. Uh, hey, did you ever did you ever see that draft pick thing that I mentioned last week? Oh, yes, it was embarrassing. <laughs> That's what it was. And again, anything to, anything to hype up space. Gotta love it. Oh, they just came out with a new commercial. It's the KFC Space Bucket. Oh yeah, can't wait. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. I gotta right, go. Hey, but... Yeah, take care. All right, take talk care. to you soon. All right, bye bye. All right, last chance to call in, guys. I'll take probably three or four more calls if you keep it short. I know that there's a bunch of people still out there waiting, like 254. I'm looking at you. Uh, that's 780. Got in before 254. 780, you are on live with Strange World. Let's make it short and sweet. What do you got? Hey, just a quick thought here. Wanted to share with the community of flatters. Mm-hmm. Since uh, every day I wake up, you know, just like you, believing in flatters, this yep. theory is pretty out there. But uh, like I said, thought I'd share it, see what comes back. Sure. All right. So I look at the flat earth theory and um, I use it as pretty much, well, very spiritual, right? I I relate everything to the Bible. I try to see if there's any clues or hints I can get from it Mm -hmm. to try to further this theory a little bit more. And it dawned on me a a couple of days ago when looking at one of the videos, how some are related to uh, kind of like a timepiece, how the the sun and moon rotates kind of like the hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, if, if, you know, the creator is there, what's stopping the entire earth that we live on to be one gigantic timepiece? And so if we look at the firmament and if there's something solid above us that's continuously rotating and it is created out of something solid, which some people say that uh, meteorites are pieces of the firmament falling down. um, So it could be perhaps some form of, charging metal that when interacting with the earth on a rotation can create essentially uh, magnetic flux lines which essentially charges the earth or the sun uh, i, I know where you're going with this so we yeah, we are potentially god's very expensive timepiece yes and uh when you look at the book of enoch it states that there are angels uh in the sun and in the stars now if you think of it <laughs> that they were placed there for a specific reason as a punishment. Right. Um, if you look at the old medieval cranes, uh, they actually use something called a squirrel crane, which is someone essentially inside a wheel, like a hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, if, I mean, if you want to look at it that way as well, with Ezekiel's vision, uh, if there are angels inside of these uh, suns and stars, that's a production of energy. And what's also interesting is I, I thought I researched this very briefly before I called you, but we are losing time every century. Um, I, that's hence the leap year, right? Or leap, we actually have to put a couple seconds every, I forget what it is, uh, yeah. every couple of years we add seconds because we're losing time. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they say due to the Earth's rotation is slowing, um, which again kind of goes hand in hand with if you believe in prophecy, the end of times, the Earth will shake and everything. Um, well, just like a watch, the battery runs out and it just stops and your clock doesn't really essentially slow down and slow down you it just essentially it's dead one day after the right. next so i just thought that was kind of interesting and yeah if, if we if someone out there wants to further in that research and just kind of build on that i think there's a lot of merit to it and potential to investigate um some more clues from a biblical standpoint cool like it like where you're going there man awesome. that's awesome Great. Anyways, right. that's my two cents. Right. Thought I'd share. Hey, you have a good rest of your night. Thanks, man. You too. Okay. Bye bye. All right. How many more calls can I take in the next ten minutes? And, and as soon as I say that, I get crickets because two five four has given up after calling what could be a new record. He called, I think, about thirty, forty times tonight. And now what? Now you're not going to call in two five four? Come on. Where are you?
<laughs> and then 502 calls in. <laughs> as soon as I pick this up, 502, you're on live with Strange World. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> who, who, who's, it's who, who, Brian from Colorado. <laughs> oh, geez, really? And you were, you were coming off that angle? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Sound like you were in musical theater for a second. And there's 254. <laughs> I'll make this real quick. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> All right, so I just want to, because I sent you that article about science of explaining the moons being bigger on the horizon. Right. Right. So here's my thing. Everybody out there, when they do the research and check out what actually they're saying, science documents and all that, they'll discover, like on that one, they don't know. Right. The illusion of yeah. when you see the moon on the horizon, why does it look so much bigger? And it gets in the sky and it's like, wow, it looked really bigger on the horizon. And yeah, the, the studies that have been done, basically, they still don't know what, what the optic effect is that's happening there. They don't, they have no right. freaking idea. But there's a whole bunch of stuff out there like that. If they actually read the, quote, science articles and all that, for some reason, they don't actually admit it. When they talk on errors, and uh, they might say it's a fact, when they actually read the papers, yeah, they always go in there and say in their theories, or we don't know, and here's an explanation. So right. Read the documents. I'm going to jump off here so you get more calls in. Okay. All right. Talk to you later, Red. Bye-bye. All right, later. Two, five, four. Hey, you just made it in. Yeah, I heard you calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize you you just hit redial? I can't believe your phone's still working. I know. <laughs> so what, uh, what's, what's going on? Well, my phone is out of data, so I've been watching TV because I can't watch videos on my YouTube. Oh, that's not good. And, yeah, I know it sucks really bad. But I've been noticing so much on TV that is just crammed in there weirdly. You know what I mean? Like, let's throw the globe in there in weird spots where it don't belong. It's just in weird spots. Right, yeah. Put a globe model anywhere you can, and most people never would think twice about it. But if you're a flat earther, you notice all of them. You you catch yeah. every single one. It's like every freaking office has a globe for no reason. It's like, oh, the police yeah. com- the police commissioner, he's got a globe. Oh, the CSI guy, he's got a globe. Oh, this this writer, he's got a globe. Why? Why do all these people have the same freaking globe? Yeah. Yeah, I was watching, uh, uh, I think it was American Dad cartoon show it was in a cartoon show as well well it's an adult cartoon no 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 no. i mean mainstream tv oh i've watched american dad it was written and his son was dancing underneath a disco ball and it was a disco ball the whole time and then it was a globe for just a second at the end and then it showed them dancing wow yeah i mean it's just like Really? <laughs> and oh, yeah. they had nothing to do with the show. You know, like they just throw crap in there. Just, it's little mind treats that indoctrinate you. Oh, yeah. There's been there's been a series of videos out there where people are tearing apart movies now. We're going into, you know, older movies you know, or movies we've watched in our past and looking to see where the globe is. And now, now we're getting globe so now we're getting flat earth references because it's become. Yeah, I, I don't know if you got a message about. I left you a message about the L. I don't know if I should say the phone company that puts out phones. Go ahead. The LG phone is called the LG G6. Okay. And if you look at it, it's L666 because the G's all look like sixes. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. Or the woman that just, the woman that just came back from space who was in 666 days. Oh, exactly. Oh my gosh, how ridiculous is that? Yeah. But anyway. The commercial has a guy in NASA taking pictures with the phone in the commercial. Oh, wow. And and it's got a new widescreen camera. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. You know, any any Anything else you want to throw? I, I hate to do this to you, but I want to see if I can pack in just a – I know you, you've dialed a whole bunch, but I, I got to see. I got to get at least one more call in tonight. Any parting shots, uh, any shout-outs, any – you want to tell no, people that you're – like I said before, many times, thanks to you, I watched many of your videos, and my husband woke me up because he turned me on to this, and he started just like you with JFK. Well, you're lucky. 
I mean, that, that you've got a husband that actually is into it. Yeah, and my son too. You know, I, nice. Do I do I have a shot shot at this? Are you guys okay? Or, or you know, is it is it a, like a rocky relationship? Oh no, it's great. No, uh, <laughs> well, it's, I, I've been married for twenty years almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying. That's great. No, honestly, that's awesome. I'm glad that uh, that he got you into it. And uh, what's your... Me what's, too. I mean, it's just been within the past year. Cool. We're, be- we're new to this, but before Before you go, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Mm, I like a good chocolate malt or strawberry malt. Nice. Good choice. Yeah. All right. All right, you. It's time to go. But thank you. Uh, right. By the way, you, by thank the way, thank you for just hitting Redell over and over again because my ears, you know, because I wear headsets when I do this. <laughs> my ears are just getting, getting that alert in the corner of my. And here's another call. You gotta go. But I will talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Well, remember, we're all on top of the world. <laughs> oh, that's right. We're all on top of the world. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Who is, who did I just pick up? This is two six nine. Who who is two six nine? It's Reverend Shane, of course, Mark. Reverend, you know what? You're going to be my last call for the evening. I thought well, let's let's end on a pious note. Okay. Well, um, I actually I have a very interesting uh, couple little bits for you. Sure. Um, uh, turns out the random guy at the at the market uh, down the road, and he's a flat earther. <laughs> Get out of here! Seriously. Seriously, dude. Seriously. Wow. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went and um, picked up uh, some liquor, which, of course, you know, I, don't drink, kids. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a point, right? Um, I went and picked up some the other day, you know, and of course, you know, we smiled and laughed at each other, and you know, it's just, it's just fun to know, you know, that he's a flat earther, I'm a flat earther, and here's this guy in line, and he's got no clue, right? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and then, yeah, he feels on the outside. You know, he's like, wait a minute, what's going on? Are these two guys actually serious about this? Yes, they are. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, what else you got? And uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, oh, I got a um, a new pendulum, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you're familiar with um, people that use pendulums, but... Um, uh, I actually, I actually went ahead and had blessed it like myself, and so uh, it's really weird because um, it moves a whole lot, and obviously it's not me moving it. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. yeah, and so of course modern science would prefer that doesn't happen at all. Right. But yeah, yeah, they they sh- they can't explain it. I I I'm not claiming to explain it either. You, sh- you should uh, think about doing a uh, a quick video and sending it to me sometime. And uh, you know, tell me what what you observe, because uh, I'll, I'll I could I'll run it past some people and break it down. Just saying, if you well, got the, if you got the time, I, it might not be all exciting because I don't even ask my questions aloud. Oh well, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could, I suppose, but I, like I don't make a practice of actually speaking my questions. Like I just I just think about it, and right. the, the, the thing the thing answers me, and. It's the it's the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Seriously, interesting, so, interesting. Yeah, yeah, well, we, it's pretty we, interesting. We got about ninety seconds. What's what else can you do in ninety seconds? And don't tell me it's like a song. Ninety seconds. Yeah. Well, I can't juggle like you did on. Oh, <laughs> that was horrible juggling at the time. I need. I I don't have my like hacky sacks. I actually can. I I've taught people to juggle, but I can only juggle the bare bare minimum. Uh, nice. Yeah, okay. that's I. Hey, hey, I, that's it's impressive to me. So, <laughs> well, again, if I was in a circus, I probably wouldn't be getting a lot of nickels, but I'd be getting a few. So, any, uh, well, any... Hope, hope, hopefully, they drop them in the bucket and don't th- 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 you know, violently throw them at you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Any any parting shots before I uh, send you any shout outs, anything, uh, words of any any chapter and verse? Um. Not particularly. Well, we'll, we'll give a shout out to Candy. How's that? I, that's <clears> funny <throat> that you mentioned that because she just messaged me and said, cool. "Let me know when you're done with your show." I, well, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know why I have to why, leaving later. It always ends at nine o'clock Pacific, t- twelve or midnight Eastern. 
Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, well, whatever. I, I, I'm not, I, you know what? I'm going to get off the phone so you can take one more call, okay? Okay. I'll talk to you later. All right. Peace, man. All right. Bye-bye. Later. Uh, unfortunately, the, we just don't have time. We don't have time for one more call. So before I go, uh, a couple quick things. First off, tomorrow I'm going to be doing Flatter Than Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer. I also have two interviews in the morning. You know what? I'm going to pick this guy up. Wait, he's going to close out. 425, four, are you there? We're going to close out the show in 30 seconds. What do you got? Say something. Awesome. That was great. With D-I-T-R-H. D-I-T-R-H um, was awesome. Where are you calling from real quick? Seattle. This is Elizabeth. Hey, I was like, Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you. I love for... being the last call. Yeah, hey, well, you are. Because of the license plate, and you keep saying how NASA lies, that they're missing it because it's the state all they don't want negative things coming out on license plates. So I saw one the other day and I won't say the whole thing. Yeah. But it ended in S A N, which is Satan. And the word before, so clearly somebody wrote this negative thing about Satan worshiping and these idiots let it through in the state of Washington. Wow. So not related to Flatter. Baby, what is this? What is this? Is the is that a model of the flat, geocentric Earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>